hour. And uh, meanwhile, uh, I'll, I'll greet the, um, uh, the speakers. Uh, this is a quite an impressive lineup. Yoshi, um, a very good um, uh, day to you. I think this is already afternoon for you, right? And good afternoon. Uh, is this at four o'clock uh, in, in Japan? Yoshi, you're muted, I think. Uh, so, and um, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I I can hear. Sorry. Yeah. Ah, excellent. That's great. Here four yeah. o'clock, yes. And uh, China three in the Bangkok too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, for uh, our um, colleagues in from Bangkok, uh, welcome as well. And yeah. uh, basically, uh, what uh, uh, I propose to do is that I'll say a few words about the session for people who are joining, okay. uh, uh, and also the overview of the workshop. Mm -hmm. um, we have had uh, already two excellent sessions. You probably have heard a little bit of this one. Mm -hmm. um, and were you uh, at the um, Australian session as well? You probably were. Because mm. uh, there was uh, one uh, window yeah. showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or the so, six p.m. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, then, uh, well, after a few words, I will hand over to you, uh, Yoshi, to yes. introduce all the speakers. Yes. And then we can follow this um, uh, impressive lineup and uh, for the presentations. And uh, because we have uh, uh, lots of presenta uh, presentations, I would be grateful if all the uh, speakers will keep to their time so that we can finish uh, five minutes before for the changeover. Um, yeah. And we had uh, in the uh, last session a little technical problem. That's why that uh, um, the session ran a, a little late, um, but uh, hopefully we could make up the time because um, uh, we basically will follow the kind of lecture kind of pattern so that five minutes uh, before to finish, uh, before the hour, mm -hmm. and five minutes uh, uh, to, uh, after the hour to start, basically. Thank you. Um, okay, thank do you. you, Yoshi, and the colleagues from this panel have any questions? Well, I think it's okay. Uh, someone has and asked. Could, could um, uh, all the colleagues to, um, to see whether they can share their screens. Maybe Yoshi, we could start from, with you. Yes, uh, because I have a, a, a program and, 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 and the rough contents and the uh, a list of a presentation. And the, the, I have one sheet. Ah, OK. Uh, Would you like yeah. to share the screen? You can okay, do, I okay. think. You are, okay. Everybody just, is enabled to do. OK, just, just a minute, OK. Um, now you can see. Yeah, that's, right. that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so now now I make it bigger. So although I uh, missed to copy uh, uh, the session title, <laughs> which you right. gave us a social aspect. Yeah. That that, that is okay. So yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, maybe, um, well, Yoshi, if you could uh, uh, take this down and we could ask uh, uh, Varam, Varamet uh, to, to see whether uh, okay, he could share. Me. Sorry, uh, uh, reverse, just, just a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe reverse, sorry, just, just wait. Uh, just wait, please. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, now you can see yes. in full, full screen yeah. or? Uh, well, now uh, we are seeing it in the present, uh, presenter's ah. view. So okay. you this need to reverse then? it. Yeah, this is the one, yeah. 
This is okay. Fine. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay, Yin, uh, you you have something to say at the beginning? Uh, yes. Um, um, well, maybe because since you have uh, put it on so elegantly, I will say just a few words um, mm. so that um, uh, we can start the session from you, Yoshi. And uh, yes. uh, the the screen sharing probably is all right. Um, okay. let, let's uh, let, let's start and uh, welcome okay. everyone. Um, yeah, and uh, greetings. Um, uh, I'm Ying Jin, and for those who um, uh, who just joined the session, uh, a warm welcome to you. I'm I'm a, a lead convener uh, of the Cambridge Applied Urban Modeling uh, Symposium series, or AUM as it, it is known in the field. And on behalf of the scientific committee and the, my fellow uh, conveners uh, of AUM, I'd like to welcome you to this uh, workshop. Uh, the idea of this online workshop is really to invite colleagues who are dedicated uh, to the development of a new urban an analysis and modeling from all time zones in the world. And the, the idea is for us to listen to the key urban challenges they are facing and uh, the, the ways in which uh, they have put forward to, uh, addressing the, uh, to address these challenges. In this way, the workshop effectively becomes um, a kind of survey of the world's urban challenges and also the advances made in the applied urban modeling field uh, in tackling them. Um, and we have a, an excellent sample of this survey from the best papers and talks that we have uh, received um, from all over the world, from Oceania, Asia, Africa, Europe, and the Americas. In terms of workshop audience, our expectations are that uh, colleagues from the local time zones and the neighboring time zones will attend uh, each session. Of course, colleagues are very welcome to attend all sessions, but we should have a, a health warning because we have 10 sessions, which will last 20 hours in total. That could give you a jet lag without traveling to this workshop. Um, the entire workshop is being recorded uh, of course, the, and colleagues can watch the proceedings afterwards on the AUM website for those sessions that uh, you yourselves are unable to attend. Um, and uh, there are three quick points to note for the logistics of the session for those who have just joined. And the first one is that uh, the workshop is run in the Zoom meetings format, uh, which means that uh, every delegate can communicate directly with uh, everybody else, either individually or collectively. Secondly, um, if you'd like to ask a question, you can either raise your hand and that, therefore uh, the chair and um, host will see that and we invite you to ask the question alive or you can use the chat box to type the questions. Right, and also we aim to finish five minutes before for the changeover so that uh, the, the sessions actually will move on every two hours. So this is um, uh, the time now to uh, introduce um, our uh, convener of this session. And it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce um, uh, Professor Yoshitsugu uh, Hayashi uh, from Chubu University and uh, also the president of uh, the current president of uh, the WCTR, the, the WCTR Society, and really a leading academic uh, in this field uh, in Japan. And uh, I'm also pleased to say that uh, Yoshi has been a very important uh, contributor to the analysis and the planning and development um, in cities uh, in Southeast Asia. And uh, so uh, the most appropriate person really to chair this session. And uh, Yoshi, perhaps I can hand it over to you now uh, so that you, you can uh, introduce the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yin, uh, for your very uh, generous introduction uh, to our session. Uh, now uh, I would like to briefly uh, uh, 
overview our uh, session. Uh, this is uh, uh, so governed uh, together with uh, uh, Professor Juni Jan uh, of Hiroshima University. Uh, and then uh, we, we will welcome uh, discussants, uh, uh, Kazuki Nakamura, Hiroiki Takeshita, and uh, presumably <laughs> Tanaruk, uh, uh, Professor Tanaruk uh, uh, from Thailand. And uh, the uh, arrangement today's, uh, of today's uh, presentation is, uh, our theme is uh, land use transport modeling and its background. Background is very important in Southeast Asia. Mainly uh, today's uh, examples are mainly in, in, in uh, focusing in, in Bangkok. And the first one is uh, a trend in the future uh, changes of people lifestyle according to uh, growth of income and the ownership uh, in ordinary time and in case of emergency. And then the second is the modeling of land use transport interactions and the people's uh, uh, mobility and the quality of life. And then uh, required policies and the supporting cyber systems. So uh, I will uh, speak, uh, uh, first uh, speak, uh, say so economic growth, uh, motorization, mot uh, urbanization, motorization, and the environment, consequent uh, environmental changes, okay? And then uh, the next one is uh, uh, Dr. Waramet, uh, uh, say so he will speak about uh, new normal residential preference in Bangkok. This is a very new <laughs> phenomenon. And then, uh, uh, Professor Apiwat, uh, he is a specialist in lifestyle uh, uh, analysis. Uh, so uh, he will talk about lifestyle changes and uh, transport, uh, request for transport and the future of, of uh, Bangkok. And then uh, Johnny Jan and uh, uh, Barshin Jai, uh, they, they will speak about uh, 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 from the behavior and the psychological perspective. And then uh, uh, Masanobuki uh, will talk about a simu micro simulation of activity uh, location and travel, uh, travel timing choices. And then uh, finally, uh, uh, doctor, uh, uh, not yet doctor, the doctor candidate, uh, which started, he will talk about uh, quality, quality of life, QOL mass, uh, a, a factor X cyber solution for congestion. Okay, so this is a, a rough sketch of uh, our session. Then, then uh, I will talk uh, first uh, uh, about uh, my my uh, presentation. Okay, so this is my title page, uh, international comparison as well. So you know, um, uh, Club of Rome, uh, the limit to growth. Uh, this was published in uh, 1972. Uh, this was sim coming from a simulation results. The population uh, g growing up, but uh, uh, they will, uh, sometime later, they will decline or collapse. Uh, because of food or pollution, etc. So naturally, uh, uh, the world, the globe, has the capacity. Okay, and uh, what what is the limit to to growth in urban transport? So uh, I will use a very old uh, uh, slides. I, I took this uh, uh, photo uh, when I was in Bangkok. 1993. At that time, uh, say according to uh, our study team, JICA study team survey, uh, more than 10% of commuters spent more than four, uh, eight hours a day, one way, four hours. So this is a boy standing uh, just beside the bus stop, uh, about 20 kilometer away from uh, city center, and he's a school will start at the city center, his uh, school uh, at 8.30, but he has to uh, catch a bus uh, at 4.30 a.m. And because the reason is uh, clear, this is Skumbit. So full of cars, uh, never moved. Uh, so, so at the time, uh, 
condition was much, much serious than today. Okay? Uh, uh, one of my uh, friends uh, was living in a, a school with soy uh, uh, near, uh, 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 say, 50, so 50. So uh, uh, his boy was uh, 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 studying at uh, uh, primary school. Normally, the kid has to be arriving at the school uh, at the home back home uh, 3 p.m. But uh, uh, 6 p.m. not yet arrived uh, in, in that way. No one uh, can focus. And because of neglecting railways in Bangkok, no, no urban railways at that time. So this is um, the mechanism which uh, uh, I drew up at that time. Uh, by the way, I was a, a chairperson of uh, JICA project to introduce urban rail transit system uh, to Bangkok. Uh, that was uh, conducted from 1992 till 96. So economic growth, everyone uh, may uh, say uh, expect finally uh, prosperity uh, at the end, happiness, but uh, the reality was the reverse. The economic bottleneck for development or uh, say very much tough congestion, uh, energy consumption, uh, local and global uh, say emissions. So why like this? Uh, economic growth, uh, income growth, that means uh, income growth. Uh, uh, then, then people started to buy cars, afford cars, and the model shift. Okay, and then, then, then uh, demand on uh, road network uh, increased. Uh, the other uh, uh, stream was uh, economic growth did not occur everywhere in, in Thailand. But uh, Bangkok, particularly Bangkok, so the, the gross poor uh, city was growing, and then uh, then the higher income uh, people expected. That, that's why people move in Bangkok. That is urbanization, migration. Okay, then then uh, sprawled, uh, go go out to live, and then longer trips, and then this is unnecessary uh, uh, demand for. Uh, on, on, on uh, of, uh, car demand, and then uh, exaggerated uh, congestion. And this urban sprawl made uh, transport infrastructure construction improvement difficult. Okay, this this is what uh, happened. Uh, now uh, uh, this is a very simple plotting per capita GDP. Uh, uh, and then, and then, uh, vertical is uh, car ownership. Uh, say Tokyo stabilized very early, like this, uh, and the London like this, and then Bangkok like this. Uh, actually, this uh, drawing was uh, prepared in 1995 by my uh, Thai student. Uh, uh, at the time, only uh, Bangkok plotted only two points here. <laughs> and then uh, Tokyo was here already. And the bank, uh, uh, London was about here, okay? So we told uh, Bangkok uh, preferably to follow Tokyo rather than uh, London. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Bangkok followed uh, uh, London or, or even exceeded like this. And the Beijing, the Moscow, uh, other cities of Mumbai, like this. And uh, the next one is uh, this is car ownership, and th this is a uh, road rings per uh, car. So the vertical is uh, uh, so the horizontal is demand, the vertical is supply. Uh, okay, so how many paved roads uh, are equipped uh, per car, uh, registered car? So all the cities, uh, every city uh, came down like this, unfortunately. If uh, the ro road length extension was done at the same speed as the speed of car ownership growth, then all the cities must have shifted uh, horizontally, uh, flat. But unfortunately, 
has, has come down everywhere. And Bangkok was the lowest. And another uh, mapping which I developed was travel time uh, to, to, to drive uh, for one kilometer, how much uh, time we need. Okay, so this is uh, coming down, uh, uh, coming down, and then uh, 1985, Bangkok suddenly shifted to the left. So this means uh, started the hyper congestion. Okay, so this uh, turning point, I defined the limit to car growth. <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, this is a uh, all the data, I'm afraid, uh, but the, uh, comparing London, Tokyo, Nagoya, my city, and then Bangkok, uh, this is average speed. Uh, uh, Bangkok was uh, the lowest, Nagoya was the highest, uh, 20 kilometer per hour, and uh, uh, energy consumption rate, uh, that's why uh, between Nagoya and uh, Bangkok, 70% more uh, fuel was consumed. And then uh, uh, yellow is a sectional volume uh, per one kilometer or 100 meter, how many cars are there? And twice more cars were in, in Bangkok compared to uh, Nagoya. And finally, uh, red multiplied by yellow, we could get uh, total energy consumption during one kilometer one or 100 meter. So five times more energy was consumed at that time. And this was not uh, appearing in the phenomena of uh, transport, but also uh, urban uh, land use expansion was different. Uh, hundred years ago, this is uh, Brew was uh, 1910. Uh, London was the biggest, but uh, 50 years later, half a century later, also Tokyo became big, but the Tokyo extended uh, linearly like this. But this is because uh, along the railways, railway station, near railway stations, people started to live. But Bangkok, uh, no linear expansion, but very much flat. Okay. Um, I think this is better to understand. This is population density distribution. Uh, comparing London, Tokyo, Bangkok, um, London has uh, island outside. This is uh, uh, garden cities or, 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 or uh, yeah, uh, anyway, garden cities outside, okay? Uh, and in between Greenbelt, London Greenbelt. Tokyo failed to uh, prepare uh, Greenbelt, okay? But uh, uh, helped by a railway, a nice suburban railways. Okay, so uh, actually, the per person uh, transport energy consumption was about the same in between London and Tokyo. But Bangkok, you know, uh, in, in the center at that time, this is uh, 1988, uh, uh, 30 years ago, uh, very much uh, uh, living uh, high density in the city center, but. Uh, you can see very thin uh, plate outside. This is urban sprawl. Okay. Uh, then how to shift? Okay. So now uh, this is one of our proposals, but uh, very fortunately in 1999, uh, the first line of uh, SkyTrain BTS was open. And that, that is about here, okay. Uh, so at that time, Dorman Airport only there, and then uh, uh, Swampum Airport was not yet existed. But afterwards, uh, this is a metro, and this is a airport rink. Okay, and then this is a, a, a expressways, and then this is outer ring road uh, improved. And this is just a, a, a trial of uh, calculation of uh, uh, if. Uh, we don't have uh, railway, uh, urban railways, how much CO2 uh, was uh, up and how much speed was down. Uh, if without, uh, 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 not inner ring, but uh, 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 expressway, sorry, this is expressway, then uh, how much CO2 uh, uh, up and the speed down and then uh, outer ring road, uh, this was very effective for lorries because uh, this is an industrial area, 
And then uh, Ramachapa's main port is here. Formerly, Big Roar is, uh, say, past the city center of Bangkok, very much improved. And then uh, we started uh, together with, uh, th this was done by Kazuki Nakamura uh, and the simulation. And uh, I have to stop now, but uh, what is important is uh, uh, many uh, politicians or policy makers think uh, if road is con becomes congested, they think only road market. So, oh, we do need more road. That means shift this line to the right, like this. Uh, and then, then sa saving time, uh, uh, improved time is a red arrow. But uh, are there any other better idea? Yes, we have. The same money, same money, uh, I will, uh, uh, omit the explanation that money is uh, under, uh, but same money is used for railway construction, then railway uh, capacity will be up, and then this capacity will absorb this amount of uh, passengers, then that means rather than increasing uh, infrastructure, uh, demand reduction is this, uh, rather than red, uh, blue is better. Then the blue case is more, uh, say, travel time saving we can expect. Okay, so now I have to stop. Uh, so it, this kind of uh, considerations uh, we have simulated and uh, many <laughs> things I have to omit. Uh, so Bangkok was uh, uh, Thailand 1.0 era, very much uh, sustainable and then uh, Thailand 2.0 not sustainable, and then 3.0 uh, improvement of railways, and then what is a 4.0? So today, uh, some of our colleagues will present about this. Okay, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> a bit uh, long, sorry. Okay, uh, I, I hope uh, about uh, roughly you understand. Okay, so now, great, yeah. Thank you so okay. much, uh, Yoshi. Yeah. yeah. So may I ask? Uh, just a minute. Uh, uh, Waramet. Mm, oh yeah, uh, Dr. Waramet, uh, can you upload? Uh, uh, yes. So let me share my screen first. Excellent. Yeah. So you've got my screen showing, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's showing uh, what a view huh? as well. Uh, right. Is that you, Varamet? Yes, I am Varamet. Is it? Uh, I know. I mean, in a picture. No, no, not not myself. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that happy. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Okay. Go so ahead, please. Hi. Say. I'd like to say good afternoon to those of you living in staying in Bangkok and also in, in in other parts of Asia and maybe good morning for those of you in, in the other parts of the world. So I'm Brahmit Vision Sen from Kassan Sat University. So I would like to take this time to present the recent analysis based on the new normal life. Okay, so that I put the presentation title as a new normal residential preference in Bangkok. So this is the background due to the COVID-19, which has arrived to Thailand uh, more than one year ago. So at that time, we started to have the, where, where is this mic? Yes, it's a pointer, okay. So we've got the first peak the April last year. And currently at this time, right, we've got another peak again, right? So 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 the thing is, is, is coming again. So what we experienced last year, due to this coronavirus pandemic, also of course in Thailand, it was peak in March and in May last year, in April anyway. So we are requested to stay home. So most of people at that time stay home much more than before. Due to this one, okay, the travel to many places were much reduced. People 
they stop to go to transit station, they stop to go to work, they stop to go to parks, of course, because they are requested to do so. And they could not go to the retail because the, the shopping center were also closed at that time. So people stay home. So the people take some other activities at home. The people doing work, people doing studies, people learn from home to exercise at home. So the travels around home, around the house, uh, increase right, significantly because this is this this is the cause of this demand. So what happened from last year? We feel that the staying home is not bad, right? Because we are quite happier. Okay, the we have experienced more or less like lifestyle change, we would like to change our lifestyle. And this happened last year and happening again at this time. So these studies we conducted last year just to examine what kind of factors that in influence the residential choice, right? Taking into account the COVID-19 pandemic experience that the people, they need to stay home. And also we try to examine what are the variation or what are the difference of the preference in terms of different economic groups, like people with different income groups, the people with different attitudes toward the, 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 the residential preference when they try to consider uh, choosing house, okay? So at that time we conducted a kind of questionnaire survey about the residential preference. In total, we asked almost 200 people and we've got the com very complete one of 160 something, like 165 respondent, and we took that one for the analysis. And for those of the respondent, okay, more than half, we stay in a detached house. And in the local terminology, we call it townhouse. Okay, some of them stay at townhouse, and some of them stay in a condominium or apartment. Okay, and before the pandemic, most of them, they commute to work by car and some of them, they use the public transport, which is, this is more chair, which is quite intuitive or quite common in Bangkok right now. And you can see this is also, also quite interesting that many of trips are conducted by motorcycle and some portion are also conducted by motorcycle taxi. Okay? And during the pandemic, because they are requested to stay home, okay? This is because they could work, they could study, they could do some other activities at home, okay? Nearly 50%, okay, they change their activities to be done at home, okay? And during their staying at home, and we asked also, do they work to the neighborhood, okay? More than 70%, yes because they need to get something to eat. They need to go to like 7-Eleven. They need to go to local shops like convenience store, like 7-Elevens. And some of them, okay, they need to do some laundries at the public laundries outside, okay. And also most of them, okay, like 40%, they also do exercise. They also walk for exercise, okay. And also they do working for some social reasons like meeting friends or meeting relatives in the neighborhood. So what I try to say here is that the working is a new, also new normal for the due to the pandemic. Right before the pandemic, we work less, but right now we quite enjoy. And some people like they they they, they enjoy working and also running. Right, and some people they also continue uh, even at this time. Okay, and for the activities at home, we also ask, what did you do when you stay home? Okay, many people said they enjoy cooking at home. They because they don't have to uh, lost their time in the traffic jams, as Professor Hayashi said. Because in 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 Bangkok, before the pandemic, we've got very severe traffic jam, right? So at that time, we don't need to stuck in the traffic. We can spend our time like three or four more hours as, at home, we can enjoy activities with families. And some of us, we do cooking, some of us, we do exercise while they can work, okay? Okay, as before. Mm -hmm. 
and some of them they can enjoy the online education they can do the gardening they can do the house maintenance house fixing house repair so these are the happiness they they they, they could feel right, during the pandemic so this creates the lifestyle change of people feel that okay uh, staying at home would be more happy okay than before so what we did we did the stated preference for the binary choice experiment we asked people okay we present them at two alternatives this is binary choice okay each alternative have different aspects like different price okay if the a house with different size and floor space a house locating in the different neighborhood the house providing the internet service free of charge and and also different house alternative with different location okay with different walking time to the station okay some house provides the free shuttle bus to the station and also some house provide the food delivery service free of charge okay and okay different houses or different alternative allocating within the different neighborhood okay okay we we measure it as a, the the we represent it as a different distance to the local shops or local groceries or supermarket okay and also the different working environment setting and some of them we also uh, present them the micro mobility presence but anyway this the micro mobility is like this is quite new it is not very common in in thailand actually but although this kind of like electronic or e-scooters is quite famous in other countries like in, in uk is quite is quite famous and even in singapore it is is also obtaining more interest okay but it's not very very popular in thailand yet okay so we ask this because we think that these kind of attributes or services okay people will enjoy okay we will support people when they need to stay home okay you can see these housewives okay then they, they don't need to get out of home they just uh, call for the food delivery service this is the delivery man okay okay you can see right now people in thailand we are requested to wear face mask okay so this kind of 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 lifestyle okay is still happening at this time okay so in the experiment we we had 10 factors with different some of them we've got two levels and some of them we've got three levels and we present them with three house types okay and we 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 did this with the 164 uh, respondent okay? and this presents some of the scenarios okay in total we've got 54 scenarios so in each for each respondent we ask them to do three choice sets three choice tasks anyway okay in each cho choice task they are requested to consider okay two alternatives and select one and choose one anyway okay and this is the result okay in this presentation due to the time limitation i just would like to show the very simple the multinormal logic model okay and if we take all the samples okay we've got this and in this analysis we and also uh, took some of them for those with high income and for those with medium or low income so you can see some of them okay you can see in general the service like the internet free internet service and the proximity to the station and the service of the shuttle bus service to the station and free the free service and like communities uh, location the, the community stores like the working environment these are quite preferable okay but for we can find we can see some difference between high income and medium to low income okay like 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 some of them are, are similar like the station uh, walk to the station distance okay both high income and medium or low income they both prefer okay in, although it is statistically dis significant at different degrees but anyways it's quite 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 common right however for the work environment okay you can see the high or high mid high income uh household high income persons they would like to work 
more than the medium to low income like this. And for the community services like supermarket, you can see for medium to low income, right, because they, they might need to walk to the local shops like for the grocery buying, okay? So they, they need to, they need this kind of factors into considerations, okay? And also both of them, right, both high income and medium income, they're quite not familiar with the micro mobility service, okay? So this is quite very straightforward and quite very, very meaningful for, for providing the insights, okay? And this is the very preliminary service. Anyway, this, this study has, has been undergoing, is still undergoing. And in some, present, in some other presentation, we also presented the latent class analysis results. Anyway, and we are also conducting some kind of service analysis, like, like the, we take into account the attitudes of people in the choice set. But anyway, because of the time limitation, I would like to conclude now that we presented the location preference, okay, we took into account the station accessibility, walk and shuttle service, of course, and we try to incorporate the new aspect, like that support, do, doing work, doing also activities from home, like internet activities, working in communities, the service, like, and also my comorbidities, okay, because these are quite new for people when they consider to, 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 to choose house location. In the past, we believe that people would like to stay close to the station because they need to get to work as convenient as possible. But right now, in the future, right, for the new normal life, they might not go to work every day. They need, they may be able to work at home. So staying at home and doing some activities in the communities may be more important than before. So we took into account these factors. Okay, and also we found different preferences for different socioeconomic groups. At this time, we presented to, to you at here the difference in high to medium income people. And also we, we did before also, we compared the preference of people with different attitudes of living also, right? And we, 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 we will publish anywhere else, okay? And to conclude, this finding will help us for uh, creating the urban development policies. And also we might need to change the way of thinking also somehow when we try to provide the public transport or public or transport infrastructures provision as well. So in the past, the working right, may not obtain much attention in the, the local context, but right now, okay, working and also some other mobility service should be, uh, should, 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 should obtain more attention. Okay. And I think due to the, 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 the time limitation, I would like to finish my presentation at this time. Okay, I would be very happy to discuss with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you so very much, uh, Um yes. And um, it's, um, it's great. Um, uh, Yoshi, may I uh, ask a quick question? Um, oh, yes, please. Because um, Baramet, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. go to your pie charts one. It, you show that uh, the car trips post uh, uh, before pandemic right, was point. something like yeah fifty eight point five eight five percent. Is that in the number of trips or trip kilometers? It is number of trips anyway. Number of trips. Yeah. Is it more so then it's so that looks very similar to the UK in that mm -hmm. particular one. So in trip kilometers, do you have um, a a feel of how much it might be? Um, for the kilometers, because people in Thailand, they travel so far a day. I think for the mm. person, I, for, I guess, right, based on my experience, I think like 40 kilometers is quite common because people stay oh. outside, right, for, for those yes. personal cars, right? Okay. This is the yes. cause of the suburbanization because people, they would like to enjoy atmosphere outside, okay, and yes. travel for long with the personal yes. car. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting. And uh, if if someone has a quick question, uh, it's okay. Uh, then we keep the time uh, for the 
whole discussion at the end. And then now uh, I would like to ask Juni uh, Jan uh, and also Boshin uh, Jai. I I am uh, properly pronouncing. I am not sure. <laughs> Please go ahead. And Juni uh, Jan uh, has been recently. Uh, uh, promoting uh, WCTRS uh, COVID uh, task force. Uh, actually, uh, he, he and myself are co-chairing, but uh, he is uh, doing 90% uh, and I'm less than 10%. <laughs> so no, no, no. he is an expert, real expert, uh, and uh, also uh, behavior, psychological uh, say perspective. Uh, he's very much talented. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Yoshi. Thank you very much, Ying, uh, for organizing this wonderful uh, symposium. I'm very happy to be a member here. And today, actually, uh, Bao Xin, uh, a, a, a doctor candidate from Tongji University, uh, she's also studying under my situation as a joint program between uh, Tongji University and uh, Hiroshima University. And actually, we wrote a, uh, just wrote a, a book chapter, and it is about that book chapter. and. Uh, uh, but because of time, uh, very short, uh, I will leave the details for the book. Hope you can buy this book uh, because it's not edited by several uh, key uh, uh, researchers in this field. It is talking about actually the land use and transport, the interaction, how to understand, how to, let's say, uh, further explore the, uh, the new possibility and from new perspective to uh, explain and model, model the interaction between land use transport. Uh, my uh, actually background uh, is uh, in more in less behavior research, and I also do some systematic uh, modeling. Uh, but uh, behavior is my one of my favorite, uh, let's say, uh, research uh, topic. And for uh, this, actually, the book chapter, uh, we are trying to show people how to uh, revisit interaction between land use transport from behavior and also uh, social psychological perspective. We try some uh, some kind of a maybe new way of thinking, hopefully, and uh, so uh, actually uh, because of uh, let's say uh, we I think uh, wrote about twenty pages, but reading more about two hundred papers. It's quite a, let's say a big effort uh, made by uh, uh, let's Bo Jai, uh, sorry, sorry Bo Xin. Uh, and Bo Xin, maybe you did better show uh, show your face to let people to know you. Where's you? I think. Here? Are you here? I think she's here. No? Anyway, Rita, please show up. Oh, here. So this is Boshi. And uh, maybe, oh, not, that's easy, not connect, not good. Anyway, so uh, Rita, maybe she can answer some questions. Uh, so uh, here, uh, I, want to talk about more uh, about what background before, uh, let's say behind uh, or writing about this book chapter. I think in a few, in this uh, inte integrated land use uh, or uh, transport modeling group, uh, you may be very familiar with this key uh, concept called residential self-selection. It's quite a, a popular and hot topic. And actually this look at uh, uh, the connection between the re residential uh, behavior and true behavior. Uh, by uh, corporate incorporating the influence of, uh, let's say, self-selections. Section normally, let's define, uh, let's say, assume that it comes from two sources, uh, social demographic, missing of uh, social demographic attributes, and missing of some, let's say, uh, in, uh, important attitudes. Uh, but because if you, from the, the concept of self-selection, it can occur uh, uh, when any uh, omitted variables uh, exist. So, uh, but if you, uh, look at the connection between the uh, residential behavior and true behaviors, other life choices, uh, actually in the analysis of such a framework, we also see they miss, they, they, they try to not play. They have ignored uh, many uh, important life choices in the analysis. So I, I suggest we would have to revisit this framework by providing some, let's say, new ways of thinking. And then we need to maybe to expand it over uh, let's say uh, understanding hor uh, let's horizon to, to expand our uh, boundary of let's say uh, the thinking. And 
I provided some evidence. This is some, let's say, data mining evidence by asking a thousand some Japanese people to report their daily, you no, know, their life choices. I think about more than a hundred, uh, let's say, life choice variables, and to see their connections. Uh, this is a data mining. It's not uh, it's a run, not random drawing, but it's uh, really data mining. Uh, let's say results. You can see uh, the connections are very very complicated. Very very complicated. So this is uh, how you know the lives how they connected and how complicated. They, but this is a for this one single let's say time point. But if you look at let's say the the, the connections interaction or in, interdependency or life course much longer longer let's say uh, time. This, this is one example, look at how ownership uh, mobility, uh, let's say, uh, de determined by other, let's say, uh, res let's say, life choices or life course, like residential location choice, household structure, employment, you can see uh, their connections. Especially connections not only occur, uh, let's say, at the same time point, but also, uh, let's say, in, from the past and also from the future. Especially from the future, it's quite new uh, observations because it suggests that, uh, especially uh, in this field, we are looking at the future planning. But unfortunately, we, when we do survey, we seldom ask people to report their future. But if you look at the, this, 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 let's say, uh, life course uh, analysis, future variables uh, is also show very strong influence. And to uh, capture such a, let's say, com complicated uh, let's connection between life choices, I uh, have proposed uh, the life course life let's say, oriented approach since 2010, I think formally. And uh, then it is uh, already published in some papers and also I already summarized into uh, several books. One of them is uh, uh, published by Springer it's called Life Oriented Behavior Research for Urban Policy. It is argued that uh, we, we developed, to understand the behavior, uh, let's say, uh, the or transportation land use uh, behavior, uh, kind of interactions, we developed to look at the, the uh, from, single discipline uh, behavior research to cross discipline or interdisciplinary behavior research and it is very much i think uh, uh, less useful especially for uh, cross sector uh, decision making because we are talking about transportation but the transport issue normally let's say have to be solved by uh, asking the help from other let's say uh, sectors so this is a kind of uh, the progress uh, is quite much uh, uh, well linked with uh, the the progress of like uh, from trip based uh, approach to the so-called activity-based approach. But my, uh, let's say, point of view is more, say, with a look, better look at uh, uh, maybe move towards more general, let's say, uh, public uh, policies when we, uh, let's say, talk about how to resolve transport plan, uh, problems. And uh, by seeing uh, those, uh, let's say, connections and, and showing the, the, uh, the some uh, evidence, then we're really better to, so how we can, because it's a modeling uh, symposium, I will show. I will talk in some modeling language. We developed to like, how to quantify uh, those interactions. This is one example. It's called life course uh, interaction to look at how uh, let's say four type of uh, I say uh, life choices: residential, location choice, ownership, environment, household structure. This is all choices. If you look at the uh, from longer uh, perspective, now, how to answer? And here it's proposed to apply the so-called uh, multi-linear utility function. To define to capture uh, people's lifetime utility, then to see how uh, they uh, consider uh, the interaction between different uh, life choices, and to maximize the utility over the life course. This is one example we see, especially if you look at uh, the. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, here, uh, we can see the the share of interaction is quite actually uh, big. Because of time limitation, this is another example of how to about, let's say uh, about a half uh, you have spent. Okay, another seven minutes yeah. or so. Yeah, yes, yes, I know. So this is another let's say examples uh, by uh, this proposed to use a time preference theory uh, to look at uh, the to reflect the uh, influence of both uh, let's say uh, future, past, and present to to to, to capture the the influence of uh, let's say of decisions or life course. We can see that uh, this is some results. Uh, so we can see that actually uh, the past have very much uh, important uh, roles, but we also see some uh, strong influence, uh, let's say, for for future, especially for young, uh, let's say, generation. And this one, so uh, but we talk about we talk about let's say the long term, or, or let's say, or planning is your behavior research. We have, we have to uh, be uh, 
it's important to look at how people change their behavior by respond in, in respond to uh, some policy measures or in respond to their let's say maybe uh, life uh, events change and then uh, normally we apply some of the, the serial plant behavior we look at let's say how the attitude norm perceived we can show uh, to uh, let's say uh, induce some intention for change for some single behavior but this existing, I think, behavior change theory only look at some single uh, behavior. But if you, this is one, one example, see when we uh, look at the intention, how people, uh, let's say, to try to, let's say, uh, change their migration, uh, loc let's say, location uh, to other some from one place to other cities, actually their uh, intention or behavior influenced by other, let's say, intention like uh, job change. Uh, let's say the children, let's say uh, uh, raising problem, and also let's say uh, housing change. They are all well actually connected. So when you talk about the change in uh, migration, you have to uh, pay attention to other changes. Otherwise, you cannot uh, actually uh, incur in reduce. Let's say uh, let's say change in jointly without joint change, you can never observe change in migration itself. And if you let's say uh, let's say uh, input let's say look at all these things together, you can draw this uh, kind of very ugly actually complicated figures uh, to see the how uh, people try to change everything in their mind, how their let's say uh, decision process linked to uh, let's say connection with other members, and how this uh, these uh, behavior or mind change over times. We need a really uh, let's say a careful uh, modeling uh, approach to capture those uh, interactions. Uh, from the dynamics by reflecting, uh, let's say, uh, psychological, uh, let's say, processes in their decisions. And, and actually, so uh, uh, we, especially with the better, we need to uh, address how uh, to sample, we need to reflect those behavior changes uh, by uh, link those change with their psych psychological, let's say, process and with the decision-making outcomes. But actually we should have found out uh, some uh, ways to uh, explore, uh, to reflect, to connect the, the very, uh, let's say, the micro level, uh, let's say, decision making, uh, uh, let's say, process with outcomes of different li uh, life choices, choice behavior, land use, residential behavior, and others. Then we can, uh, let's do some simulation. This is one example. In the case of uh, household energy consumption, uh, it is, it is uh, quite possible. We already show that how we can, let's say, uh, reflect. Uh, those, uh, let's say, looks like very complicated, but actually uh, we can, let's say, run, uh, let's say, uh, to make some uh, feasible uh, modeling approach. And for the key messages from this chapter, actually, actually and uh, we emphasize because there are so many uh, ideas from the social uh, secular, uh, uh, perspective, but uh, because a lot of concepts, uh, but uh, I think we need to maybe combine uh, those existing uh, theory to maybe develop some uh, meta theory, otherwise, uh, we cannot really uh, capture the full picture in people's minds. And to capture, let's say, uh, we need to apply this uh, uh, life or approach to, to try to reflect the connection between life choices. And we need to, let's say, uh, reflect the core changes, core changes in different behaviors. And uh, by uh, uh, incorporating such, a, let's say, behavior changes to, de de to develop some process-oriented uh, planning methodology and last one, I think, is quite also important. Uh, we have, well, let's say, the, the very met, met talk about some things, post pandemic things. I see some interactions. I think we should better to further look at such interactions. Uh, so, because of time, I want to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, another very interesting presentation. Uh, if uh, someone has uh, quick questions, uh, please do. It's okay now, or okay? So we'll discuss uh, together later on. Now uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, Masanobu Ki uh, to present about uh, his uh, uh, micro simulation uh, in Bangkok. Okay, please upload. Yes. Can you see the screen? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Now. So, yeah. Okay. So, thank right. you very much for uh, giving this opportunity to uh, talk about my uh, research. And uh, I have changed um, uh, my title uh, because uh, 
the previous cycle is uh, too large uh, extent, and uh, I'm still conducting on the uh, whole simulation uh, modeling and uh, about uh, taking a case of Bangkok. Uh, this is a part of the uh, research project by, led by uh, Professor Hayashi uh, about uh, um, uh, to the alleviate uh, uh, traffic uh, problems in Bangkok. And uh, today's uh, presentation is uh, a part of that project and uh, part of my modeling. And uh, in total, uh, the whole modeling, uh, our team, is to utilize the micro simulation. But uh, for the input of that micro simulation, uh, uh, we are conducting on the location of the uh, business uh, Offices or the business entities, because uh, uh, that micro simulation requires the uh, origin destination pattern. So the, uh, we are now in this uh, today's presentation. Uh, we are going to uh, create a scenario uh, of the uh, destination. So uh, that this is uh, 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 this study is a collaboration with uh, Dr. Warmes. And also the, that the micro simulation is co collaborated with uh, the team of Rolf Mokel in Technical University of Munich. So the, uh, this is a, a part of that uh, big project, but uh, my uh, presentation is quite small extent. Uh, today's uh, presentation is a uh, quite small extent of that project. So uh, we are considering uh, to the, the urban core function location will change uh, by the railway extension. So uh, in this pr presentation, I'd like to talk to how to estimate that location. Uh, I already talked about a little bit about Bangkok, but uh, uh, as a background, the ba uh, Bangkok metropolitan region has uh, quite a monocentric uh, structure as shown by Professor Hayashi uh, in his slide. And uh, that uh, drives a, a quite severe uh, traffic concentration and congestion. So the, uh, the extension railway network will improve the accessibility of near suburbs. So currently, uh, the, uh, the railway net, uh, commuter railway network is uh, uh, quite uh, concentrated inside the uh, central of Bangkok, but uh, uh, its extension is expected to the suburbs. So uh, we assume that lead the polycentric pattern, uh, urban pattern. Uh, so and that would uh, alleviate the traffic situation as well. And this is a, a, a shape uh, of the, our urban footprint of Bangkok. And uh, as uh, explained uh, by uh, Professor Hayashi as well, and uh, before uh, the railway uh, provision, the the uh, urban footprint is already extended to the outskirts. And uh, so the most part is depending on the automobiles. And uh, the uh, urban uh, footprint extent is not necessarily alongside the railway, but uh, the, there is so many places uh, without railway. So the, these areas de uh, depend on the road transport. And also the population distribution is, uh, it is quite a, a high density in the uh, center side of the uh, Bangkok, but uh, uh, as many uh, people explained, uh, there are so many people are also living in the, uh, not uh, alongside the railway station, so that they have to, depending on the uh, private uh, transport or uh, buses. On the other hand, the, uh, what we are focusing on the urban core facilities like uh, uh, office buildings or banks or hotels. So the location of those uh, facilities are quite concentrated on the urban center. And also, as we uh, talked, it is quite a monocentric pattern. So the, the bank, looking at the bank, uh, there's so, uh, several uh, banks uh, located outskirts of, of the uh, Bangkok because uh, banks are quite uh, um, uh, facilities for uh, uh, people's life. Therefore, uh, it's located outskirts as well. But uh, the office buildings are quite uh, uh, located in the center of Bangkok mainly. And uh, therefore, uh, the 
as Warmes uh, explained, that uh, uh, so many people has uh, long commuting uh, to the city center from the uh, suburbs. And also uh, hotels is uh, more uh, concentrated, concentrated because uh, mostly hotels are used by the for, uh, tourists and the tourists tend to stay a very uh, convenient place. So the maybe hotels location would be uh, placed at the center of Bangkok. So the, uh, we expect these uh, urban facilities location would be changed by the railway station. And the uh, right-hand side figure shows the uh, uh, future plan of the uh, commuter rail in uh, Bangkok. And the uh, blue point shows the already uh, open station and green is the planned uh, network. So the, uh, we consider uh, the commuter rail will expand to the uh, outskirts in Bangkok. And, uh, Possibly, uh, those some of the uh, crossing point uh, of this station would be a poten uh, candidate of another urban core uh, of case of Bangkok. And left hand side shows the uh, traffic uh, speed uh, in Bangkok. Uh, this is the uh, observed uh, real time speed uh, in the evening. Uh, uh, no, not uh, late afternoon. And uh, quite uh, in the city center, it, the traffic situation is quite severe, as we can see. So the, uh, the maybe uh, urban function uh, relocation to the outskirts will uh, is expected to alleviate the load congestion as well. So the objective of this uh, study is to capture the effect of expansion of public transport network on the accumulation, accumulation of urban function. Uh, and uh, estimate its prob probability of uh, urban core facilities location uh, that is induced by uh, construction of planned railway network. So uh, the, uh, as we uh, assumed, the impact of railway provision will uh, change the people's uh, choice. So the maybe uh, modal shift uh, from road to railway is expected then uh, load congestion would uh, uh, alleviate it. At the same time, uh, the railway uh, provision will increase the accessibility at the uh, uh, suburbs uh, of the uh, Bangkok, then uh, development around the station will be induced. And also uh, induced trip attraction will uh, make a spe special shift of congested area and uh, we are go going to uh, simulate using a micro simulation uh, for this uh, spatial shift. But in today's uh, presentation, I'd like to uh, consider about the development around the stations. So yeah, the method to, uh, in- Ask us so about seven minutes, please, yeah. Okay, yes, okay, okay. thank you. So the, uh, for the method of, for today's analysis is uh, comparison of railway network, current rail network and planned network. And based on the current situation, we estimate the uh, location potential uh, model of urban functions uh, based using the observed uh, location of urban facilities. And uh, applying the future uh, planned network, then uh, we will estimate the uh, potential location of urban function. So the, uh, to estimate the uh, importance of uh, station, uh, we utilize the centrality index of network. So for the current network, uh, this, uh, the size of the circle uh, indicates the centrality uh, on the network. And of course, uh, the, at the city center, it's, uh, the station's uh, centrality is high and uh, outside the uh, uh, network, it is small. But uh, in the planned network, uh, some stations at the uh, suburbs has also uh, high uh, centrality uh, on the network. So uh, as higher the centrality, then uh, there's a possibility to locate the urban function. So we modeled uh, the uh, probability of location and uh, we assume the, uh, as the higher the centrality uh, of station, 
then the probability, expected uh, number of facility would be also higher. So uh, using this uh, exponential distribution model, uh, we estimate uh, uh, the location uh, uh, probability. So that this is a, a parameter, estimated parameters and uh, parameter signs uh, are fine. And uh, okay, uh, just uh, omit this explanation. And uh, this is the result of the estimated uh, probability uh, of uh, location of urban facility. This is a case of a bank, uh, bank. and uh, under the current network, it is uh, uh, quite uh, the, the bright uh, area means a higher probability. So the uh, at the city center, it is a, a higher probability uh, for location of bank. Uh, but uh, on the planned network, uh, it will uh, go to the outskirts, have also higher uh, probability, get to higher. So the, the most right uh, figure shows the difference of the probability. So the, uh, at the center, uh, the probability decreases, but the outskirts, uh, the location probability increases. This is a case of uh, office building, and uh, just compare uh, the current network and current network. The, uh, it is also similar uh, tendency, but uh, uh, it is uh, a little bit different from the uh, case of bank. Uh, it is more concentrated near the station, so the uh, its difference is uh, much higher uh, than case of bank. And this is a case of hotel. Uh, so the, this is a much more uh, uh, high difference uh, between uh, current and current network. So the, um, this is just a, a potential probability. Uh, so the, uh, this uh, would be uh, the case of a hotel. Uh, they will uh, more uh, higher potential to locate outside uh, in the Bangkok fan. Uh, all the uh, 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 commuter rail network is open. So here's the conclusion. Uh, so we, in this study, we uh, estimate uh, a model uh, for special, special shift of urban core functions uh, under the planned network, railway network. And using this uh, model, uh, we estimate the possibility of relocation of urban center function. Uh, along the new railway line. And uh, the spatial shift uh, is, is expected to alleviate uh, traffic congestion on load and uh, also the possibly long time to travel and the shortage of land supply at the city center. This is a next step uh, uh, study. And to manage the problem caused by the transport demand supply gap, the uh, development policy of urban core is also needed uh, to control the trip attraction. So we are uh, going to make a more concrete scenario for the urban core location. For future study, uh, we also need to uh, uh, generate a scenario, as I explained, and also uh, our uh, model today we explained is quite simple. And uh, we may need to the analysis of autocorrelation of location. Uh, that means uh, uh, to analyze the agglomeration, agglomeration effect is needed. And also uh, combination with uh, scenarios for teleworking or uh, electric commerce as uh, Warham, uh, Professor Warmet uh, mentioned. So the, this uh, lifestyle change should be uh, in, uh, incorporated. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, again, a very interesting presentation. And uh, I, I know that the, your work is uh, related to uh, the next uh, uh, presenter's uh, work. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, Masanova has uh, uh, presented uh, the, to forecast the future uh, relocation of uh, core activities. Uh, while the the, uh, the next presenter Charlie uh, with Salut will uh, 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 treat uh, commuting uh, pattern, how to uh, reduce uh, morning peak and uh, evening peak, uh, how to avoid uh, the uh, say uh, fixed uh, centered. Uh, activity locations, the workplace locations, and then suburbs uh, uh, 
uh, residential locations, such situations. Uh, if uh, anyone has a, a direct uh, uh, short comments or uh, questions, uh, please do. Maybe we do together the discussion. Okay, then thank you very much indeed. And then next is uh, we start that uh, we call him Charlie. Uh, okay, upload. Hi. Good evening, Professor Hayashi. So, uh, Professor Hayashi, you are muting. Okay, okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. Can I share my screen? Okay. Okay, please do. Okay. okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, go. Okay. Okay. Uh, good uh, evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Visarut Acharya Vriya, a PhD candidate from Chubu University. So today I would like to present uh, part of my uh, PhD work and one also part of the such a project conducted in Bangkok. So the name for topic today is uh, a sufficiency-based spatial temporal planning for daily activity travel supporting new normal for flexible working. So the outline for today, uh, we have a uh, five section. First is a breakdown. The second, the ICT-based solution to alleviate traffic congestion. The third section is a daily activity travel shift from urban space to cyber space. And after that, effect of flexible working to, to on quality of life and social burden. And finally, conclusion. So for the background, so I would like to show a brief history of uh, Bangkok transport. So first, in the long time ago, in the, in the past, so we have a tram operating in the Bangkok during about 1888 until about uh, 1968 here. So uh, over the time, the behavior of the and preference of the Thai people changed to use a car, more car. So that make uh, a lot of traffic congestion in the uh, after day. So on the, in the 1999, we have uh, launched the BTS SkyTrain system and also following with the underground metro line in 2004. So the traffic congestion uh, still not so much uh, relief. So today situation here, still congestion. This is the same area of the, this picture, 1993. So traffic congestion not so changed. So this is a, a limit to, uh, growth in car ownership and limit to motorization already presented by Professor Hayashi. So from the economic growth, so it's uh, causing increasing level of the car ownership, making sub pirate uh, cannot be provided fast enough. So that make it uh, effect to the increasing of travel time of the people in, in Bangkok. So now we're facing about the severe traffic congestion. So now we are trying to find the solution to relieve this traffic congestion. So in my work, I'm finding solution focusing in the, based on the ICT system. So first, if we talk about the ICT, so mass is a, one of the emerging concept solution to relieve traffic congestion by shifting, shifting transport mode from private to public. But the problem is in Bangkok, there are some limitations because public transport right now also very congested, like the image I show here in the bus system in the Moshi station. And this is a, a SkyTrain, very congested. So for mass system, quite difficult to shift people to public transport because of already congested right now. So there are also some potential to like uh, for uh, public transport people shift to the on-demand service. So that can make more congested. 
So our solution is we need to promote to shift workplace and work out. So what is that? What kind of application that we can provide people choice of workplace is kind of the daily activity travel plan, planning system, provide the right place to go. Like for example, you don't need to go to office every day from nine to five, split, split some uh, part of your work to some co-working space, office, or even work from home. Like from the, this concept, from the current situation, nine to five working lifestyle to the new lifestyle system like this, go to co-working space to avoid the traffic congestion. After that, go to office, some kind like this activity, which is promote to relieve traffic congestion. So there are some questions that how possible that people can split the working time because right now the model is a we have to go to work in the morning, evening, go back home. So it is possible to shift people to work through the ICT system to cyberspace more. So this is I will show some uh, uh, statistic. So this is a survey the behavior of the internet user in Thailand in 2018 and 2019, we can see that people use internet in more, uh, more internet for many activity like food service. They order the food through the application to the internet. Much more, uh, 19 is uh, increased very much about uh, 15%. Also payment uh, like uh, internet banking or payment for many uh, shopping and de delivery of good parcel and also document and also entertainment, mu movie, music and transport service. For the work life, uh, this is a uh, result of survey on the measure of stay home to stop infection for nation provided by International Health Policy Development Agency. So, we can see that there are some potential for Thai people to work from home. So from the result, they said people can work from home someday. They, they, they do work from home some days, 21%, about 21%, and work from home every day, about 19%. So this is uh, correspond to the uh, Warmed, uh, Professor Warmed to uh, result about 40% that people can work from home. So we make some uh, short experiment to uh, calculate the effect of the flexible working on the quality of life and social burden. So in this experiment, uh, I have uh, some uh, supervised uh, under Professor Key and also Professor Warmed to uh, analyze uh, this kind of the simulation. So in this simulation, I, I create some scenario that if X percent of population can participate flexible working, for example, they can split the time of the work, half of the work time to go to work at somewhere else, not office, co-working space, and after that, maybe three or four hours, go to office for three or four hours and go back home. Some this scenario we are created. So we also uh, created the uh, co-working space. So we, we assume the place for people to go to work instead of the office. So in this simulation, we, we uh, uh, vary the X value from zero to 100% to check how much effect on the, uh, to the quality of life and social burden. So this is a level of traffic consistent change uh, by time of the day due to the uh, flexi flexi fl uh, percent share of the flexible population. So the blue line is a BAU. So this is a nine to five working lifestyle. And the purple line is a new working lifestyle, flexible working, 100% of people is uh, flexible. So we can see we can reduce the uh, peak hour congestion. So in the morning peak reduce and 
uh, evening peaks also reduced, but we increased some percentage in the midday. So this is a result of spatial distribution of traffic situation. So this is in the eight hour, eight, 8 a.m. in the morning. So we can reduce some, some uh, congestion in the morning, but, but for the uh, midday. So there are some congestion for the flexible working population yeah, scenario. So because they are some, I have some like a uh, exchange, the uh, working place here. And six, in case of 6 p.m., the traffic congestion for 100% flexible working population is uh, can release very much congestion. And for the change in average travel time per daily trip, so the percentage of the uh, reducing of the travel time for the 100% uh, flexible population is about reduced about 33% comparing with the BAU case. So this means if more people uh, can participate the flexible working system like our lifestyle, we can reduce the, the whole uh, average travel time in the network. And we also conduct the, some uh, calculation to estimate the CO2 emission. How can CO2 emission can reduce from this uh, scenario? So we, we apply the uh, CO2 emission model developed by uh, Bart and Willibun Sobsili in 2008 model. So we can see that we also reduce the uh, CO2 emission also about 14% in the 100% flexible population case. So in the conclusion, uh, now uh, we are talking in the first chapter is about Bangkok uh, facing a severe congestion in road traffic and public transport, particularly in the peak hour. So only expanding the transport infrastructure cannot solve the problem completely because it's a uh, many limitation like land area or budget and construction time. So we should use some ICT-based system to promote, to change the demand side, fix uh, working, working shift and also work time shift should be encouraged. And in the third chapter, we can see that the new generation of working will be more flexible in working and auto activity without the location and time constraint, that ICT system can exploit this flexibility to optimize the city activity and travel. And finally, from the our simulation, we can we can show that the flexibility of the space and time of activity combined with ICT based system are the key to improve uh, people's quality of life and also reduce the social burden that we show quality of life in terms of the travel time and CO2 emission in terms of the social burden. And thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, uh, this is interesting. Uh, this, uh, his uh, presentation uh, shows only uh, the uh, effects of uh, uh, differentiate uh, starting time from home, uh, uh, and not not directly go to city center, but uh, ninety degrees uh, different uh, direction or forty five degrees, whichever, uh, <laughs> to stay at the co working place and the work there until the congestion will be uh, relaxed, uh, and. Uh, he may uh, do uh, more work uh, if the co-working places will be more then uh, go to the nearest uh, co-working places uh, closer and, and that kind of additional effects uh, will be uh, examined and then and, uh, another point is from infrastructure only policy to uh, demand side uh, relaxing uh, policies, something like that. 
Okay, any direct question? Uh, okay, now uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, uh, Professor Apiwat, uh, uh, no need to uh, introduce the contents, but uh, please do. <laughs> um, okay, let me share. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, can you all see the slide? Yes. Yep. I assume so. Okay, great. Um, so uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to share with you some of my thoughts. Um, my work that I'm presenting, I'm presenting today is probably quite different from the previous speakers in terms of uh, the methodologies and um, uh, the approach. But um, I hope that some of the some of the findings from my work uh, will help um, uh, frame some of the work uh, that you plan to do in the future. Uh, so the idea here is that um, I, I like to talk a little bit about how lifestyles are changing in Bangkok and what the implications could be for uh, planning of transportation and land use uh, in the city. Uh, the, the paradox uh, that, um, that we're facing Sorry, just okay. Um, is is that uh, infrastructure uh, is long term? Uh, so in in the way we uh, plan transport and other facilities in the city, uh, tend to focus on how we can utilize the infrastructure in the long term, as well as the the assumptions uh, that we have uh, for modeling. But uh, from from what we we have done in the past in terms of uh, modeling and planning. Uh, we tend to assume the lifestyles um, that we see at the moment uh, will stay on forever, uh, maybe not forever, at least in the long term. But um, the assumptions that we see tend to be short term uh, because in reality, um, lifestyles could change uh, quite a bit. And also um, there's so much uncertainty um, uh, regarding the future, um, even uh, for the short term. Uh, in the case of COVID, we already see that a wild card uh, like a pandemic could change a lot of things um, uh, drastically. So um, this kind of paradox uh, um, is, is something that uh, we need to really think um, uh, in the future. So um, I think um, there's potential use of conceptual frameworks and methods uh, from a discipline called future studies and a subdiscipline of that is strategic foresight. Um, it's the kind of discipline that uh, analyze analyzes uh, different levels of uncertainties and come up with different uh, prospects of, of the futures. So uh, what I'm sharing um, uh, today uh, is actually based on um, the, the current uh, work that I'm working uh, with my colleagues at Chalonukon University. Um, the title of the project is called Urbanites 4.0. Um, it's basically um, we're looking at the futures of Thai urban life um, in six different aspects, uh, ranging from how we how we are born or how you know the the, uh, the the future population will be born, and how we live um, and how we work, uh, travel, shopping, and eventually how we die. And in fact, um, as part of that, how to deal with um, death, basically. Um, the, the project looks into four levels of urbanity, um, not just uh, the city of Bangkok itself, but also in the current year, this, which is the second year of the project, we're looking into how life is changing uh, in secondary cities and uh, smaller towns and rural villages in Thailand. Uh, so uh, it's an ongoing project um, that I'm sharing with you. Um, so um, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go into uh, some of the findings that we have for Bangkok and and uh, um, and its surrounding uh, areas. Um, so uh, the way we look um, into uh, uh, the futures of urban life uh, in Thailand is that we're not just looking at how things are changing uh, at the moment. Uh, this is what we call uh, trends, right? Um, it's it's something that that is pretty clear uh, and invisible at the moment. Um, and there is a particular um, conceptual framework that people in the field of um, future studies use quite a bit, 
uh, which is what they call the STEEP um, framework. Uh, it's S-T-E-E-P, um, social, technological, environmental, economic, and political. So some of the trends uh, that I'm highlighting in this slide uh, show uh, some of the key uh, mega trends uh, that we think will shape uh, the futures of, um, of Bangkok, at least uh, from what we uh, can see at the moment. Certainly in terms of demographic, uh, things are changing a big deal, uh, not just in terms of aging. Um, uh, the concept of aging society is, is quite well recognized and, and there's a lot of literature on it already. So uh, it's, it's something that, you know, in terms of planning, uh, we just have to do it. Um, there is really no debate on that. Uh, so again, also um, uh, the, the households that are uh, considered uh, sink endings, um, single in income no kids and double income no kids. Uh, these are the ma majority, these are becoming the majority uh, types of households in Bangkok. But there are also other, um, uh, let's just call them modern families uh, that uh, we need to consider. Uh, they're not um, the usual households, uh, household types that we see and we often use in our um, household surveys, uh, not just for uh, transport planning, uh, but also other types of planning as well. We tend to assume a particular set of uh, household types uh, when we think about um, uh, families, but things are changing quite a bit. Uh, friends living together, um, retire retirees work, uh, living together, even though they're not, relatives at all. Uh, there are many uh, new types of families that we really have to consider uh, when we think of how uh, the demographic um, factor uh, could, uh, could, could affect the way we think about the future. Another issue with Bangkok, another trend uh, in Bangkok, I think is, uh, well, I, it's part of the, of the research that we found is that the city has, has become so globalized beyond return. Um, our previous speakers have talked a little bit about uh, the hotels and things like that. Uh, Bangkok for uh, just before COVID, uh, it was probably, you know, number one and number two in terms of the most popular uh, destination for tourists at the global level. Um, and in terms of uh, investment and trade and, and other things, this mega city has become uh, globalized beyond uh, return. So this is the trend that we really have to consider when we think about how we want to plan the city. Um, another uh, mega trend uh, is digitalization, not just in terms of, um, you know, uh, uh, we're using more digital media, uh, uh, cell phones and social media and things like that, but because of the trend of um, the uh, internet of things, IOT, um, the integration between physical, um, biological and digital life uh, is, is, is real and, and that's going to be the basis of how we think about um, urban lifestyle will become. Uh, pollution is norm, um, uh, sadly it, it is. Um, so how do we live in this place where, uh, you know, uh, the, the good day is rare and where we don't see pollution. Um, and lately in this past one year or two, uh, you see new political movements um, in the city um, as well as other parts of Thailand, which could dictate uh, the way public policy is going to be uh, formulated and implemented. So these are the trends uh, when we think about how lifestyles would be shaped. But when we think about um, the future, especially in the long term, um, I want to stress the, the usage of the, the term uh, futures with an S, uh, with a plural uh, uh, indicator uh, indication there. Uh, because we're not just looking at the future uh, from a singular point of view. We're not predicting this is going to happen and, uh, you know, and, and we're going to do uh, the planning according to that uh, determined future. But we really have to consider different types of uh, different levels and different types of uncertainties that we expect um, could happen in the future. So, um, so uh, in, when it comes to planning, uh, we really have to think not just in terms of baseline future uh, uh, based on the key trends that I mentioned earlier, but also uh, alternative scenarios or alternative futures based on uh, key uncertainties that, that are plausible um, in the future. 
So, um, so uh, in, in the seven minutes, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I have two more slides. Um, so basically, uh, the baseline future of Bangkok, uh, we could expect that Bangkok after COVID uh, will go back to uh, the way a lot uh, the way it was, uh, which was uh, a cosmopolitanism. Uh, it will remain a cosmopolitan city, uh, not just based on tourism and and travel, but also uh, the connectivity. Uh, in terms of investment and, and trade. Um, digital uh, will remain there and it will be a key factor that uh, determines how we live in the future. But it's not just the usual digital life uh, that we see perhaps 10 years or 20 years ago, uh, but it will be based on platforms. Um, so let's call it a platform life. Uh, so a lot of things will be determined uh, by major platforms um, and a lot of them uh, will dictate uh, our life even when we are sleeping uh, because we are already very connected uh, in terms of uh, biologically and, um, and digitally. Uh, individualism uh, will remain the key trend, but it will not be uh, the type that probably I, uh, we think that it will be a type of what we call tribal um, individualism. So people live in tribes. Um, they're not going to be, uh, you know, uh, one person all, all the time. But they, they, the way they communicate and live uh, with other people will be based on a very dynamic uh, way of, of tribal life. Uh, inequality uh, will remain there uh, from womb until tomb. Um, even before you're born, uh, uh, inequality is already there. And it's, it's going to be in all aspects of life. Sustainability will be the trend, um, but partially because uh, the climate will, uh, the climate change will actually dictate the way we live. And liberalism, um, not just in terms of the politics, but also how um, we think about other people and how we live. So the ideas and values will be more diverse. But um, in terms of um, uh, scenarios though, um, I, I won't have time to go into the details, but we think that the key, uh, the key uh, drivers that will dictate the way we live, um, at least in urban areas and in Bangkok, uh, will, uh, will, be, um, will be based on two uncertain factors. One is the social relations, how we are going to uh, interact with other people in our community or at the global level. Are we going to become more cosmopolitan and become very, very open uh, to uh, the global flow, flows of ideas and technologies and investment, or will we go, will be going back to becoming more commun communitarian? We stick to our clans and cliques uh, that that we're familiar with. That's the horizontal uh, driver that we use uh, when we think about the future scenarios here. The vertical uh, axis is is the space. Um, uh, because we're, you know, we are urban planners in our, our school, so we think of space. But that space would would be we be still fixed in terms of physical space, um, or we are going to be freed uh, by connectivity, uh, not just digital connectivity, but also in terms of airlines and you know all the transportation that could help us uh, be more liberated uh, from the physical uh, fixity that we have. So these four. Um, scenarios actually frame the way we think about um, the, the sort of more long-term scenarios of urban life in Bangkok. So this is my last slide. So there are a lot of things that um, we're trying to figure out um, in our current work, um, especially the implications for long-term uh, transportation and land use uh, planning. Uh, we have a lot of assumptions at the moment in terms of where things are. Um, our previous speakers uh, mentioned how things are concentrated in the middle of the city in Bangkok, you know, offices, um, hotels, and things like that. But th those things could change um, in the long run with digitalization and how uh, things are be de being delivered at the moment. We also have a lot of assumptions about the types of households um, in our models and, and the way we plan. Um, if we're still doing the same all four stage demand modeling, we still divide people into different zones, which could actually not be functional or uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, useful at all uh, when it comes to the real world where people are more dispersed and, and, um, and flexible. 
And in terms of planning for say uh, public transportation, we used to think of uh, public transportation as a way to aggregate uh, travel demand. But the, if the space and time uh, dynamics is changing because of digitalization and other factors, then the way we think about public transportation could probably change. Uh, the case in point is uh, ride hailing services, the deliveries. Uh, these are uh, affecting the way we, we are thinking about how we should model and plan uh, infrastructure. Uh, lastly, it's about investment strategies, because as I mentioned in my first slide, uh, infrastructure is a long-term commitment. We're spending a lot of money on building all these uh, preconception about how people will live in the future. And I myself was trained that infrastructure needs to be connected and you know we're thinking really long term. But could it be that we really have to different we have to think about the investment strategies very differently because of the way people will live differently. So that's uh, that's sort of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, your presentation has uh, given uh, say as you told uh, uh, say strategic uh, foresight uh, of future perspective. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, any uh, short question to uh, Apuat? Okay. If not, uh, I would like to invite two uh, discussants. Uh, the first discussant, uh, please, uh, uh, Kazuki Nakamura, please. Uh, thank you very much. About three to four minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, very interesting presentations. I just uh, like to have some uh, comments uh, based on my interpretations, and also uh, have some questions uh, to 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 uh, um, start some discussion. Uh, so uh, my comments, uh, mainly tubers. I just uh, see your uh, presentation and I just see two aspects in them. The first one is uh, um, more like uh, vision, um, like from presentation of uh, Professor Hayashi and also uh, Professor Waramet and uh, the Professor Apiot. Um, Hayashi, uh, Professor Hayashi told that uh, um, talks about uh, infrastructure development um, to shift demand from load supply to to the uh, laid supply. Um, then Dr. Warmet uh, um, talks about uh, um, more like uh, lifestyle change. I mean, uh, laid um, based uh, supply has also some limitation. There are also congestion in railway and there are also limitation of the capacity of infrastructure. So that uh, he talks about new trend of lifestyle change um, to diverse demand, um, particularly from this COVID um, trend. So walking is kind of an uh, example of a new trend. Then Professor Apiot um, um, proposed uh, some concept, conceptual vision of, uh, of Bangkok or Thailand. Um, he talks lots of uh, kind of uh, elements of uh, visions, um, like demographic factors, technology factors, sustainability factors, and more diversion. And he summarized the more social relation, the spatial relation to, to, to um, to design new visions, it's very, which is very interesting. And the second aspect is a modeling, um, the, which is from uh, Professor um, um, uh, Cho Sensei. I, so, I forgot the uh, English name, but that's uh, Cho Sensei. And uh, uh, Professor Ki um, uh, and the uh, Chari. Um, so Cho Sensei um, talks about uh, complicated uh, linkage uh, between lifestyle and behaviors. Uh, paying attention to the um, activities and people. And also, Ki Sensei, Professor Ki um, talks about uh, spatial potential. Uh, I think this is important based on the um, data limitation in developing countries um, because we don't have much data, so that we need uh, some spatial potential based on uh, with available data. So, centrality is one of the approach. And also, uh, Charlie talked about. Uh, um, application of smart technology 
to evaluate QOL or um, lifestyle changes. He just tried to uh, provide information to, to change lifestyle one of, as a, one of the uh, kind of policy to change people's behaviors. So based on these two aspects, I lay some questions. Uh, the first question is uh, probably which is important for this ses session. What is a vision of Asian city? Um, which is more applicable to other developing countries and also has some implication to, to developed country like Japan or UK. This is the first question. And the second question is about modeling. What is the challenge of modeling um, land use transport um, and also micro simulation as well, or psychological modeling as well? What is the new challenge of uh, modeling to, to how can I say, um, to evaluate or to propose this kind of new visions. So uh, these are my comments and questions. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Takeshita, your uh, comments are, are uh, related or better to separate? Yeah. Almost, almost the same, but the, I would like to make some comments about the, this session. Okay, then, okay? then, okay, so uh, your comments first and then uh, do together. Okay, so, please. Uh, thank you very much for the inter uh, interesting presentations. And uh, it's my thought that the, one of the major challenges in this field is how to incorporate the uncertainty. In this regard, I think there are many hints in the presentations of this session. So in terms of challenges, so, uh, changes in society, for example, about 10 years ago, it was unimaginable to uh, introduce services that combined ICT and transportation, such as ride, ha ha ride hailing. And, I will, uh, and also, I think it is impossible at this point to accurately predict how the world will change in the future due to the COVID-19 pandemic or some other aspects. So, and as you can see, that people movement on the thoughts, uh, preferences, and the society can change drastically due to events such as this pandemics and, for example, the natural disasters such as uh, uh, such as uh, earthquakes. So, in addition, the development of technology is unexpected and unimaginable. For example, uh, uh, sorry, it is quite possible that the services using new technologies will suddenly appear and become widespread within the next 10 to 20 years. For example, the uh, smartphone is a good example of this. And I hope that should be the system which, which Sarut has proposed in this session. However, the transportation infrastructure and its uh, development and the land use cannot be uh, changed so easily. Then, therefore, uh, in this age of uh, increasing uncertainty, uh, I believe that the future planning should not be based on a single future social scenario, but on the multiple future social scenarios, uh, which appeared sensei suggested, uh, with uh, several possibilities, and, and be able to cope with any of the scenarios that may come true. That's, this is just my comments. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you very much. Perhaps uh, I, it's, it's a good idea to start uh, discussion uh, because uh, we, we started uh, uh, 30 minutes uh, uh, late, then, then we have another uh, 30 minutes, but maybe we extend a little bit more. Uh, okay. Uh, so, um, yes, I'm afraid, uh, uh, Yoshi, yeah. um, it's difficult. Up, to, maybe we could uh, do another five minutes, but not uh, okay, 30 okay, minutes. Okay, yeah. okay. But still, we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, more than 15 minutes. OK, so now. Uh, well, so I think we're, we're already nine o'clock uh, here in the UK. So it's on yeah. the hour already. So yeah, uh, yeah so uh, there is a very good discussion already. But I think we, uh, because of the colleagues, will have uh, arrived already for the next session. OK. okay. And yeah, so m maybe we should wrap up this in five minutes. Yeah, OK. So. Uh, now, two discussants uh, gave uh, uh, comments. Uh, so, uh, uh, the speakers, can you briefly uh, respond uh, uh, in uh, two minutes or so? Uh, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry <laughs> about this, but uh, you can see that uh, the the crowd is big, and then we have to keep the time. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe uh, uh, say uh, uh, so, Waramit, Professor Waramit. Uh, yes. Okay. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. I try to respond very quickly, like the two 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 points that Dr. Nakamura has has raised about firstly about the vision right i think i think many speakers in this session we talk a lot about the ict right mm -hmm. i think in the future we should seriously incorporate ict mm -hmm. when we devise any policies so in the past ict policy may be considered differently in the different world than land use and transportation but i think from now on right because like in the past land use and transportation were separated. And now land use, transportation, ICT, I think these three should be incorporated together. This is the vision, right? And secondly, about the modeling, right? I think the challenges, um, I can see two points, two, two common points here, like Professor Junji Chang and also I, also I myself, I took the psychological factors quite seriously in the modeling. I think this should be incorporated, incorporated in, in some way, right? Like Professor Junji Chang included in like in the lifestyle change in the long term, right? Visions, right? And myself, like we be considered like very micro or disaggregated points of view. And secondly, for the modeling, I think the data and availability is it is very common in the developing countries. But right now, with the age of ICT, I think it is possible at this time. The data that was not obtainable in the past, like land use or some other information. But I think this is now maybe feasible with ICT. Like in the past, we used the conventional like personal count or traffic count, but right now we don't need to, to do the traffic count. Like Professor Key, right? He showed the, the real-time traffic information. I think this should be incorporated in the modeling, right? So that we, we can do the model in a more fancy way. This is my, my point, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, now, um, I'm afraid the time is uh, very tight, so uh, I cannot uh, ask uh, all the speakers. Um, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Apivat, uh, what is uh, your response? Uh, perhaps uh, oh. if we could pick out the most important message to do it in one sentence each, so uh, that would be great. Um, so I would say uncertainty should be the key to planning and modeling. And that's mm -hmm. my sentence. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, actually, this is um, uh, this, this session certainly brings out this uh, point really well. Okay, Professor Jan, uh, what is uh, one message? <laughs> okay. so my, my one sentence message is that uh, how uh, people can share the vision proposed by policymaker in their decision making. That should be the key. Okay, uh, Professor Key, please. Uh. Okay, um, uh, my message is uh, uh, maybe incorporating new technologies uh, to the modeling is quite important uh, through the session. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. And then Charlie, please. Oh, uh, your, for my messages. Okay, for, for my messages, uh, how can we keep the flexibility uh, effect from the COVID-19 after post COVID, not to come back to the same life in the before COVID. Okay, that's uh, my message. One minute is uh, I think this is a very good timing uh, because of the happening of uh, COVID. So uh, going to the city center, everyone going to city center every day, that's stupid. So that is a 20th century stupidity. So we have to reverse it even. Um, that is our role, and uh, including uh, policy makers and the moderators, and then we have to cooperate together. And uh, thank you very much for your excellent uh, presentations and also discussant uh, comments. And I'm afraid I could not take uh, uh, say floor, uh, from floor your questions, but uh, if you have, uh, please, uh, note on the chat and then later on uh, send to us. Thank you so much. Then return Thank to you. you. Thank you very much.
Thank, thank you so much, um, uh, Yoshi. Well, so it's a fantastic uh, uh, group of uh, people actually interacting to look at uh, the different aspects of um, transport and land use um, interaction, which is a wonderful session. Yeah, I'm really sorry for the time being short, uh, not able to take more questions, but uh, I think what Yoshi said is absolutely right, so that uh, we could look at um, the questions in the chat box and certainly we will uh, assemble these and forward. I think there is enough uh, student supporters here actually to, to do that for us. And for those who have questions, please um, uh, add them to the chat.